Uh, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter number 5. Uh, pick up the reading in verses 21, 22, and 23. I'll back up. Let's do something else on that. Let's, let's go to uh, uh, that fifth chapter. We'll do 22 and 23. I'll get those 21 in a moment. Uh, you, you've heard this probably a million times uh, from the pulpit, from different preachers. I, I quite often allude to it because it's the fruits of the Spirit of God. And the word fruits appear in the New Testament, unless I counted wrong, 67 times in New Testament. Uh, and that is quite often for a word to appear except the word and and to or something like that. And as God speaks about it, he starts off in Matthew chapter 3. And the word of God tells us in Matthew chapter 3, uh, verses 10, 11, and 12, it's talking about John the Baptist and uh, John the Baptist is talking about the fruits of the Spirit and uh, fruits of a Christian. And he talks about a tree that don't have any fruits shall be hewed down. And uh, sometimes I wonder when God's going to cut some down. Amen. And I wonder sometimes when God's going to uh, dig around them and nourish them that they'll now grow and... and uh, and then sometimes God takes and prunes them that they might bring forth more and much fruit, as John 15 talks about the grapevine. And I find that the Word of God teaches us in Galatians that Paul is speaking to a troubled world and a troubled church. And if you don't think we are in a troubled world, you've got your heads in the sand. Amen? Amen. And if you don't think we have trouble in our churches, then again, you have been very, very much deceived. Some folks think that's where God is, and when you go there, the devil's not present. But I want you to know where good is, evil is always in the house. He's working his work and doing his thing. And I, I see that the Word of God explains to us that folks, uh, the church of the living God was born out from the love of God. For God so loved the what? World that he gave who? His only begotten son. Now he is the head of the church. And I find that the Bible teaches us in Galatians chapter 5, in all this chapter of Galatians, what happened? The church of Galatia, they had went from saved by grace through faith, and that not even itself, it is a gift of God unto, they had fallen from the grace of God. They had decided in uh, the Word here, as you study it, you'll find that the Bible says in verse 4 that Christ has become of no effect, chapter 5. And he says, Whosoever you are justified by the law... Listen, you are fallen from grace. It didn't say anything about losing your salvation, but what the church of Galatia did, they went back into legalism. They went back into uh, having the letter of the law without the spirit of the law. They were strict. They were cut and dried. They had it all planned out. But I want you to know God's spirit better have something to do with it. And the Word of God says that He gives us nine fruits. And if God allows me to, and if I live nine more weeks or whatever it takes, I'm going to try to bring out the nine fruits of the Spirit. I'll be trying to preach on those nine fruits. Tonight I'm going to get the first one. And the Word of God says in Galatians chapter 5.22, but the fruits or the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Then he says there's joy and peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, fake, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no what? 
law. And the Word of God says meekness and temperance and all these nine fruits that he's speaking about. He said, listen, you can't, uh, you, can't legal, you can't legislate these things. You can't do anything unless you've got the love of Christ. I, I like what he says. Back in number 14 of that fifth chapter, you just hang on to that fifth chapter. I'll show you a few things. He said in verse 14, he says, For all the law is fulfilled in one word. What is that word? He said that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So I find that the Word of God teaches us that uh, as Paul was talking to us here, he was calling them back from legalism. You see, they had the right attitude, but they had no love. They had the right attendance, but they had no love. They had the right attack on sin, but they had no love in their hearts. There's a difference between men doing right and doing it because they have the love of Christ in their hearts. There's a big difference. Then the Bible tells us here that legalism was strictly followed by following the law. And they had decided, folks, to be legal in every avenue that they're doing. Sometimes we forget that the Holy Ghost of God is the keeper of the flock. Sometimes we forget that God is in control. I know that sometimes man does things, and, and by the grace of God, uh, we have done things. In future, we will probably do things, but I find that whenever we do them, we need to do them uh, in the spirit of meekness and love. And the Word of God says that He's teaching us what it is to know the works of the Spirit of God, the fruits of the Spirit. Now, you'll study the 19th verse, 20 and 21st verse, we find the works of the flesh. But I want you to know I'd rather walk in the Spirit. As Galatians 5, 16 says that, I might not fulfill the lust of my old flesh. So I'm going to talk to you for a few more minutes about the Spirit of love that should be in our hearts. Paul reminds us and teaches them that the Holy Spirit of God uh, is to the Christian life the fresh breath that gives us life. It is something that changes our attitude toward life and toward one another. I tell you, if I walk in the flesh, I do sometimes get irritated not only with things but with myself. But I'm grateful that the Spirit of God works and changes me. And the Bible says um, that, folks, the Holy Spirit of God has a work that is done. And how did you get saved? The Bible says, I'm going back to the third chapter and give you a couple of verses, then I'm, I'm going to try to be expedient and get on with it. He said, O foolish Galatia, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before which I, Jesus Christ, has sent evidence set forth, crucified among you. The only, uh, this only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the work of the law are by the hearing of what? Faith. He said, how did you get the Spirit? Did you work it into your life or did it come simply by faith? Then he says this, O foolish, O ye fools, are you so foolish having begun? Now listen, in the Spirit being saved, got saved by the grace of God, took off in the Spirit. Now are you now made Perfect by what? The flesh. And I'm going to talk about that flesh in a minute. But I find that, folks, if we are saved by the grace of God, we need to allow the Spirit of God free reign in our hearts. The Spirit of God should dictate everything that I do. The Spirit of God should lead me. I should uh, take counsel from the Spirit of God about every uh, move that I make. Every morning I get up, I should ask uh, for a double portion of the Spirit of God. Listen, the Bible says what Elisha knew, 
uh, that God's man, Elijah, was going to leave uh, this earth, and he had told him he was going to go. He said, listen, uh, what can I do for you before I go? Uh, folks, he might have said, we I've got some parchment over here uh, that I've written scriptures on. I've written out uh, messages that I've preached uh, uh, to others. I, I've got all kinds of things in my library. Elijah might be a thinking that. But Elisha said, listen, I just need a double portion of the Spirit that you walk in. I want you to know, folks, uh, I'm grateful that the Spirit of God... Now listen, when the Spirit of God comes to your life, the first thing that it brings... Uh, the first thing that comes your way, the first thing that come into my heart was the word love, a four-lettered word that God says, uh, that folks that he puts into our heart. You see, when the Spirit of God comes, it brings all nine of them. Hey, folks, it'll bring them to you, and it's whether uh, you received him or reject him. If you want to grow in grace and knowledge of Jesus, you have to cultivate of the fruits of the Spirit uh, that they might blossom in your life, uh, that you might uh, produce the fruits that the Word of God teaches us that a child of God should produce. Well, the Word of God says that, folks, that we are to continue to walk in the Spirit. Well, he says this, for the fruits of the Spirit is love. For avenues the Bible describes as love. Four descriptions of it. First of all, it talks about God's love for man. I've done use that scripture. What was it, Lee? He said, for God so loved the world. You see, God, uh, folks, demonstrated his love through that little baby. Jesus said he sent down through Virgin Mary that you and I could believe him after he died on the cross and was resurrected, uh, that you and I could be saved. That is a description of God's love for men. But I find the Bible teaches us uh, the second description is, is man's love for God. Hey, folks, how much do we love God? I know that uh, we talk about how much we love God, but I heard a pastor preacher this week in our associational meetings. Uh, he was talking about how much that we say that we love God, but uh, folks, I, I just want to ask you what he asked us. Uh, the other night, he said, you say you love God. Do you love him enough to trust him? Big difference. Yes, sir. You can say you love your wife, but do you trust her? You can say you love your husband, but you trust her. You can say you love your pastor and the people all about you, but would you let them handle your pocketbook? Would you? Would you allow them to take your bank account and work on it? Do, that, do we love God that much? Some of us uh, don't love him that much. We say, God, now I love you, but I'm not going to trust you with anything more than you can handle. Amen. Now, God, I don't think you can handle my finances or my family problems. I don't think you can handle anything except my salvation. You say to me, hallelujah, I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah, I'm going to heaven. That's all I hear. Hallelujah, I'm going to heaven. Why don't you give God the rest of your life? Why don't we give God the rest of it? Why don't we say, hallelujah, God, he's going to make me make it through the day. Thank God that I made it through the day. Thank God that he's uh, taken me and given me power to overcome this old flesh. In John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, he said, If we have, say that we have not sinned, we make God a liar. I want you to know, folks, I need him every day. Why? Because I'm a sinner. And I need him to help me. And the Word of God says, that the Bible tells us in Matthew 22, verse 37, in verse 38 it says this, the Pharisees got together, and you know what they were saying? The Word of God said, One lawyer said to them, after Jesus had, had talked to them, they were astounded at his doctrine. And, and one of the Pharisees, uh, the doctor, doctor of the law, got up and said to him, Well, I tell you, let me ask you a question, Jesus. I want to know uh, what the greatest commandment is. And Jesus says these words. He drew it from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. He drew it from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse number 6. 
and he drew it from the book of uh, Proverbs, and you'll find it there. The Bible says that, that we're to love the Lord thy God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our what? Minds. Listen, folks, you know what that literally means? Oh, that showed me that, folks, it teaches me that I'm to surrender my complete will unto God. Hey, that I'm to love God with all my being, with my heart. That's my emotions. That's the seed of my emotions, who I am. My soul, that is the tabernacle where God dwells. And the Bible teaches me of that sin of folks will never let God enter into that. But when I let God enter in there, then he takes a, a seat in the throne of my soul that to never be removed. And then he says, not only my heart, my emotions, my eternal security in Christ Jesus, my soul, but he says he wants to control our minds. Man, sometimes I don't let him do it. You ever have that problem? I got a mind problem. Sometimes I wonder where it's at. Hey, Amen. I wonder where it went. Uh, sometimes I, I allow my mind to wonder. But Jesus said this. Now I'm talking about the fruit of the Spirit. We say we love God, but do we folks love him enough to trust him? Then he says this. We find evidence of folks that don't love God. I'm in verse 19, fifth chapter. He says, now the works of the flesh. Now what was he talking about? He's been talking about the flesh and the spirit. And he's telling us that are saved by the grace of God. He's, he's telling us what the works of the flesh is. What are they? He said, they're manifest. Which are these? There is what? Adulterous. The next is what? Fornication. The next is uncleanliness. Uh, you see, uncleanliness means uh, literally sexual input, um, impurity. Oh, we're not living in that day today. And he says this, lascivious, and that's just the sex, sexual uh, excess. Do we not see it everywhere? And he says this, idolatry, witchcraft. Why, listen, folks, you pick up your news, New York, uh, Knoxville Journal, and you'll read witchcraft when you read your horoscope. <laughs> you know, uh, when I was a little boy, I don't know if you ever uh, did this or not, but have you ever heard of a widget board? <laughs> yeah, some of you done told on yourself. You, you've heard of widget board. And we'd all get together. We go to Haman. <laughs> we'd get together and we'd be talking and, and we we'd feel like, you know, we'd go through all that stuff. You say, preacher, what are you talking? Hey, there, there's practicing witchcraft all over our nation. And he says this. Hey, when you really study witchcraft, let me give you this. When you really study witchcraft, it goes back in the revelations and speaks about drug addicts so what what's number one in the nation today problem <laughs> sorcery is what it really comes back to when you study witchcraft and sorcery that's going across it's raging in our number one war in america is war on drugs and he talks about it. he moves on he says variance uh, and you'll find that that literally means strive and discord and he talks about immolation that is jealousy wrath strive and seduction you know what those things heresy that is jealousy or division among us envy murder drunkenness railing and he says such lack of which i tell you before as i have told you in times past that they which do such things shall Shall what? Underline that. Shall not what? Inherit the what? Kingdom of God. I know this is not a true statement, but I'm going to say it anyway. I, I just know about Baptists, but I, 
my, my thoughts is to Baptists, Baptists feel like we can do anything under this, under the sun, go to heaven. Amen. Can I get an amen from this side? Can I get an amen from down the middle? I, I believe, folks, that some of us have forgotten what God says. And some of us don't know the Bible no more than we know a Sears and Roebuck catalog. We don't know more about the Bible than we do any a magazine and a magazine rack. We know more about magazines than we do the Word of God. And some of us have fooled ourselves and convinced ourselves we're just as good as everybody else. And I want you to understand this. You are probably as morally better than I am. But I want you to know, folks, I'm going to heaven because I've been born again by the Spirit of God. You can measure yourself by me all you want to. But when you start measuring yourself by the Word of God, I tell you what, you'll find out that folks... We come short. Now, when the Pharisees ask Jesus this question, what's the greatest? And Jesus begins to tell them, if they'd been honest, you know what them Pharisees would have said? We need a Savior. We need a Savior. But they was like a lot of folks. Why? Why, the Bible tells us they just narrow their nose up. He said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Hey, folks, I believe that we, as God's people, not only we need to love him, but we need to learn to trust him. The Bible says the evidence, and he talks about the evidence that you and I have that when we're saved. What is that evidence? 1 John 4, 19, I believe it says that we love him because he what? First what? He first loved who? Us. <laughs> and you see, after people get saved, you know what happens? If you're not careful, if you're not careful, we can go back into legalism. This is what they were doing. They got saved, but they went back into legalism. Ephesians, the church of Ephesus, Revelation chapter 2. Take your Bible and turn, I'll show you. Ephesians chapter 2, uh, we'll read verses 1. And we'll read a few verses here, I'll show it to you. And it talks about it. Ephesians chapter 2, he said, uh, write the, uh, the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? These things say, I hold it, he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thou what? I know thou what? And I know thy labors. I know thou what? While they worked and they labored and they were patient, and how thou didst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which they say they're apostles, and are what? Not, and hath found them, what? Liars, and hath bore them, and hath patience, uh, and for my name's sake they have has labored, and hath not fainted, nevertheless I have somewhat against. Listen, folks, when I read them first three verses, I'd like to have a, I'd like to be a member, I, I am a member of a church, but I tell you what, to have an ideal church is have somebody that gets in there and breaks the sweat and works for Jesus and labors and works for God and folks just keeps on keeping on for the glory of God. I'm telling you, they just dig in and they won't quit for the grace of God. They folks, uh, they had this outward appearance, but they had a problem. What was it? Nevertheless, verse 4, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left. <laughs> you know what they've done? Now, this might not sound too good to you in church, but every one of you listen to it on the TV. You say, preacher, you shouldn't say stuff like this in our church. I guarantee if you turn ABC, NBC, or CBS, I get embarrassed with what's on some of those channels. Fox Family Channel, blech. I'm going to say that again. Fox Family Channel, blech. I never saw so much garbage in my life on Family Channels. I, I, I just, well, anyway, where am I at? I'm in the altar, not you, Creek, amen. You know what's happened? 
You know what they did? They found them another lover. They left the one they had fallen in love with and they got them another lover. Hey, folks, how many people today have taken a Jesus and used him for salvation, but they have decided they're going to love the world and everything about it? Hey, the Bible says that Jesus looked at this church and said, everything about you is right, but you've got a problem. A love has went out the door. Write this down if you write stuff down. When legalism comes, love leaves. When legalism comes, love goes out the door, goes out of our fellowship. I'd rather have three or four that love Jesus in 10,000 that had everything by the book. I really would. I, I tell you, folks, the Bible says here the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. I'm on love. I'm going to wire this love out for another hour and a half, okay? <laughs> love the love for who god they had it to begin with they decided they was going to do the works of the flesh and folks listen they when you get into the works of the flesh you heard what i said what the works of the flesh is you think that's godly do you think that's more spiritual when we do all these things? I believe that, folks, we've got it mixed up. I believe the Spirit of God will bring you out of the world and separate you, and you'll love godly things, and you'll hate evil. <laughs> okay, number two, the love for God. Then he says this in Matthew 22, verse 39. Let's read it together. And thou shalt love thy as thy. Boy, that's tough, Jody. There's some neighbors I don't like very much. How about you? <laughs> I'm not talking about your next door neighbor, I'm talking about God's family. You know what God's family? God has got, God's, he, he's the God of all the earth, is he not? Ever creatures of God. And folks, listen, the Bible teaches us that Jesus said this. He said the fruits of the Spirit is love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Then love your brother as yourself. Then, then, then verse 30 bothers me. He says it like this. And he says, and all these hinge, all these hinge. And I've made this analogy before. You take the hinge off that door and what will happen to it? It'll fall. And he said, all these hinge upon these what? Two. Love God, love your neighbor. Love God, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's easy for me to tell you how much I love God. You know what? The evidence how much I love God is how much I love my neighbor. Jesus said if, if you just give a glass of water my name when your enemy hungers Throw him in jail. No. I said, feed him. Overuse. The word love. Overused. Over, ex over talked about. But little expressed. Little expressed. 
And you say, preacher, yeah, I agree. Well, you need to love more. Well, let me give you just a little enlightenment. Do we not all need to love a little more? Love thy brother as thyself. You see, when legalism comes, it destroys our love. Look what happened to Galatia. Have you got your Bibles? I'm going back to Galatians 5. What did he say in verse number 15? Let's see what happened to them. When they decided they were going to start living by the letter of the law instead of the spirit of the law, you know what happened? He said, but if you bite, when's the last time he bit somebody? <laughs> he said, you bit and you vow what? One another. Take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Have you ever heard the word back, biters? <laughs> Backbiting. They were biting and devouring one another. You know, you know the biggest, you know what the biggest enemy of the church of the living God is? It's inside the fellowship. The church is usually about the only one that devours its own self. Satan gets in. As long as things going well, sometimes we'll, everything's well with us. But let, let me give you this. You, you check your spirituality when you don't get your way at church. Amen. You, you check your spirituality. And I like what uh, a dear old man of God that, that was one of our members here, he died a year ago tomorrow. And uh, I, I've kind of taken his philosophy after he said it. He said, I don't know why in the world you fuss and complain about not getting your way at church. He says, well, most of you don't even get your way at the house. And he's talking about himself. He said, why, my wife, I have to get along with her, do we not? What happens? He said, we're to love God, and then we're to love our neighbor as ourself. Then he says this, third thing. You see, the fruit of the Spirit is loving God, loving our neighbors, and loving the lost. Uh, that's kind of tough, isn't it? Loving the lost. Those that are lost. Let me ask you something. And, and, and let's just bring it to where we live at, okay? Where would you be tonight? in your spirituality if others if others had cared about you as we care for others did you get that now, I might have to explain that to myself. Where would I be if I was a lost man out there today? If, if others that led me to Jesus, if others that led me to God had Felt and done as we do today. When's the last time you won somebody to Jesus? Have you ever? Have you ever just one on one 
sat down and talked to somebody and led them to Jesus. Kim came to the altar a while ago. And I thank you, Kim. I, I, I said these words to her ear. And I said to you, I, I thanked her for coming. You know why? Because me as the preacher needed to pray tonight. I prayed this afternoon. Studied all this afternoon. I'd studied all this week on this message. But I needed to just really get before God. And Pat sung that song, Somebody, what? Prayed for me. Uh, huh. When's the last time that we decided to pray for somebody? When's the last time that we got on our faces before God? Begin to call people's name to Jesus. First hmm. Corinthians 13. I'm through. Sharon gets a song. 1 Corinthians 13. Let's read it together. You can find it. 1 Corinthians 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity I have become a sounding brass and a tingling cymbal. Sounding brass. You know what that was? That was blowing your horn. You know what a tingling cymbal is? These bands. I remember in the old days, back in, they'd bring a group in, singers, and They'd bring a set of drums in and have big cymbals on there. And uh, it'd raise eyebrows. <laughs> They'd whop them cymbals. Wow! And you, sometimes you couldn't even hear the singers for the music. That's all right. But I'm not complaining about any of that. But what he was saying is this. You can toot your horn all you want to, and you can beat your own drum all you want to. Well, without love, we're nothing. Then he says, verse 2, And though I have the gift of what? Prophecy. Now, folks, I don't know about you, but most of these things he describes here, I don't have the gift of it. And neither do some of us, even though we think we are so spiritual. When's the last time you spoke with the tongues of men? And I, you know what the tongues represent? The, the Greek for that and the study, when you study that word tongues, it literally meant the Corinthians believed that tongues was a voice only from God. How many of y'all spoke with authority like God has? That's what he's talking about in that verse 1. Then he talks about too. He talks about though that he understands all prophecies, and he says, "I understand all mysteries." And listen, he said, "I know it all." I've got a 13-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old daughter. That if I want advice, I can just go to them. <laughs> Isn't that right? I love you. All knowledge. And though I have all what? Faith that I could do what? I mean, the last time you moved a mountain, 
Now, you might try to do it on a caterpillar or a case or a John Deere, but it'll take you a while. <laughs> but he's talking about faith to move mountains. And that could just be a mountain of sin or whatever you want to call it. So that I could remove mountains and have not what? Charity, I'm what? Underline that N-O-T-H-I-N-G. Verse number three. It's getting better. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the what? And I give my body to be what? And have not what? How much profit's in it? Nothing. Verse number four. Charity suffereth long and is what? It's kind. <laughs> it envieth not. Charity vaulteth not. It don't push itself on you. Does not behave itself what? Unseemly. Seeketh not her what? Own. Is not easily. Don't you make mess with me? Not easily provoked. And thinketh no what? Now let's get to the good part, number five. Charity, and he closes out, thinketh no evil. Verse number six. What's it say? It rejoices not in what? but rejoices in what? You see, there's three, I believe, B's here. It beareth, it believeth, well, a two, and hopeth all things. And you know what else it does? It endures the hour and a half preaching the preacher church every Sunday. It endureth all things. Love really does. And you see what I like about it? It says that love never fails. Do you know that? But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Number one is what? Love. For God, for God's family, and for the lost. 